A common problem that players have with their back and volley is they're trying to do too much work with their racket and with their arm and because of that they end up swinging at it, mistiming the volleys and making too many mistakes. So what I want to do in this video is show you some footwork drills that you can work on for your volleys by spending a little bit of time practicing them. It'll help you be more aggressive with your feet, step into your volleys and that should really help with your consistency. I hope you enjoy the video. If you do, it'd be great if you give me a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to my channel before, really appreciate it. If you could do that as well. The split step is always important but on the volley it's even more important because we've got so much less time to react and when it comes to the split step there's a couple of key features. Firstly the timing of the split step so that we're landing just after our opponent makes contact so then hopefully we can read where the ball's going and react really quickly but then we've got the technique. So in terms of the technique there's a couple of key features. Firstly we need to land nice and wide. It's important to land wide at the baseline, but if you watch high-level players, often they're even wider at the net because you might need to react really quickly to move to the side. And we're gonna be looking at a drop step in a moment, and you can only do it if you land with a wide base. So thinking about a hip width, probably two hip widths apart, if you've got the flexibility to allow it, landing on the balls of the feet so we can be very reactive, the heels won't be hitting the ground, and then on the inside of the balls of the feet, so thinking about pushing off our big toes. We're then going to lower our center of gravity. So I'm bending down, bending my legs. Now at the baseline, a lot of players are just a little bit higher, so they have a bend but not quite as deep at the net. You watch someone like Federer, very low, so we can react as quickly as possible. So that's what you want to be aiming for as well. Nice and low, nice and wide. Hopefully your body and shins at roughly the same angle with a neutral pelvis rather than having an arch in your back. And then you just want to practice your split step. So just get used to landing with this correct technique. Do it over and over again. Practice coming from one side. Practice coming from the other side. Practice transitioning in from your approach shot. So start out slowly and then start to build up the speed. So can I start to jog in and then land with an efficient split step? And you've got to make this an automatic process so that when you're out on court, you recognize your opponent shaping up for their shot. Maybe around the time they initiate the swing, you start to take off for your split step. So then you land in this good position just after they've made contact. Before we move on to the next section of footwork, I need to talk about something that's really important because potentially one of the big things that's causing you problems at the net is that you simply don't react fast enough. And what this comes down to is a lot of players' visual systems don't function at a high enough level to react quickly. Because of that, they're not using their feet well and it's creating a lot of difficulties. Now, the good news is that you can actually train and improve your vision and your reaction speed. To help you with that, I've created a free tennis vision starter program. If you would like this free program, I'll place a link there. I'll place a link down in the description. Click on either of those links. It'll take you over to a different page. And if you enter your details there, I will send you this free vision program. Now we're going to look at some different pivot steps. So a pivot step is when you turn and pivot your foot in the direction that I'm moving. So when I'm moving towards my backhand side, it's my left leg that's going to be pivoting. And then I'm going to push off that leg to step into the ball. But depending on the ball that we're dealing with, we're going to do this in different ways. If we're trying to get to a wide ball, we're going to be doing a drop step, which is what I just mentioned a moment ago. So I'm dropping my foot underneath my hips and my pelvis. So the ball of my foot is underneath my pelvis. My shin is pointing back in the direction that I'm coming from. And that allows me to push off and cover a lot of ground. Now, we could be doing this going more to the side, but generally when we're volleying, we're trying to cut off the angle. So it's gonna be a little bit more like 45 degrees. So I'm trying to step across in that direction. And it's literally just a case of practicing the movement. Now, initially, you might wanna start from your ready position and just drop the foot underneath and get used to the feeling of it landing. It'll feel a little bit weird, a little bit artificial. You want to try and stay low, so I don't want to come back up and go to there. We're trying to save time, so I'm going to be dropping the foot underneath and then pushing off. As this happens, I'm doing a mini unit turn to prepare me for my volley. And you just practice it. Try and see how it feels to kind of go a shorter distance, but also how far can you actually push? If I drop under, can I cover a little bit more ground? Now, what you'll probably notice that as I did that, I also started to push off my right leg. So I'm not just dropping under and pushing only with my left. Now I'm landing, 
pushing off my right and then kind of stamping and planting my left foot underneath my hip. So that is what we're going to be working on. And you want to do this from different transitions. So starting in here, but maybe I play a forehand volley, come back, set up, and then go to my volley. Maybe I've come for a backhand volley, I've come back in, I've landed, and then I've gone. And of course, we've got the option. We play our approach shot, we're moving forwards, and then we've got to cut the angle off. And you just have to practice it and get repetitions. And with footwork, you're always working on it without the ball first, making it more of an automatic habit. And then it's naturally gonna happen when the ball's there. The next pattern that we're gonna go for is a step out. So when the ball's a little bit closer, we won't need the drop step, and I can just step out into the ball. If the ball's very close, I'll literally just be planting and stepping in, or maybe I might actually be moving quite far forwards, or I might be stepping out a little bit further and then stepping into the ball. So similar movement, but there's a little bit of variety that we can add in depending on the shot. This could be a higher ball, it could be a lower ball, but we're landing, pushing off the outside leg, and then our right foot is coming through just to carry our momentum. And just like we said a moment ago, we need to practice the transitions. So forearm volley, come back, step out. Backhand volley, come back, step out. Approach shot, step out. Next, we're gonna do a slightly unusual footwork pattern. We don't see this combination at the back of the court in the same way. Very specific to volleys. They're a little bit further away. Often it's a little bit higher. So this is a ball that a lot of players struggle with. And this is the footwork pattern that you can use to deal with it. So we're going to be doing a shuffle step. So we're stepping out like we just did and then stepping across ourselves. So landing, shuffle, and then stepping forwards landing, shuffle, and then stepping forwards. And again, we practice this in the same way, getting the transition to so practice it in isolation and then working on different transitions. You know, whatever I've done, I've hit my shot, I've come in, I've recognized it's there and I've transitioned into the volley. And then the final one that we're gonna work on is uh, an unusual one that you won't use that often, but the ball that's hit at your body can be a little bit challenging to deal with. So I want to show you a way to kind of practice this to help you address it. This time, because I'm gonna be moving out the way of the ball, I'm actually gonna be doing a funny little pivot with my other leg. So I'm gonna be dropping my other leg under and then pushing off that leg. And at the same time I do that, or maybe just before, I'm pushing off this leg. So now I'm landing, and stepping away like so. So land and step away. Land and step away. And depending how athletic and how springy you are, eventually it might just turn into one movement where you spring and you just kind of move to the side all in one motion. But start, practice this, and then this, then put them together. And then as you get more springy, just start to transition. And again, it's one of those things, if you haven't practiced it without the ball, you get a ball that comes to you and it's a really difficult ball to deal with. If this movement is just an automatic process because you've done it however many times, you're much more likely to make the volley. So they're the footwork patterns that we deal with. I guess it's worthwhile mentioning the importance of trying to line your nose up with the contact point as you're doing these footwork patterns, especially on those high balls you've shuffled out, trying to get your head up looking at that contact point. And again, that's where the vision training side of it comes in. It'll help with reaction speed. It'll help with watching the ball through to the contact. And really by programming these footwork steps and improving your vision, that is really gonna help you to be way sharper at the net, much more consistent, stable volley. Okay, hopefully you've enjoyed this video and found it to be useful. Again, it's always appreciative if you enjoyed it, give me that thumbs up. If you've got any comments about what we've gone through here, I would love you to leave them down below and I will catch you next time.